Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I apologize that my face is not in the camera. Um, it's like, I have a weird shaped, kind of like a flower vase, but it has a rounded top. There's no opening. Um, I'm leaning my phone up against, so I apologize if the, uh, the frame does not show my face. Um, but I'm trying. <laughs> Uh, so, we got a new house, like, last week, and had to move out of my apartment, um, that's a whole thing. I'm not going to go into it because I'm not emotionally ready yet, um, but something happened. I had to leave my apartment quicker than I thought I would. Uh, then I went home to my mom's house, and now I'm at a new place. So, anyway, um, yeah, so I thought I would tell you all about our trip to Michigan. Um, so... Back in May, um, when I was home to take my NBCOT boards, my, my puppy raisers, well, vegans puppy raisers, had mentioned previously that we'd come to their house in Michigan and just have a vacation. They, they live on the lake and it was a whole thing. And we was like, okay, well, we're, we'll see, you know, COVID and everything. We were going to go last summer, but then COVID happened. Uh, it was just a tentative idea in our heads. So then about... Two weeks later, my sister calls me, this is like uh, first week of June, and she goes, we should go to Michigan. She's like, I'm really stressed out about my job, like we should just go. And I was like, okay. So my sister has never ridden in a airplane before. Um, so she thought it was like a taxi, like you just call and book one and you go. And I was like, no, it doesn't work that way. You have to do it online, like there's a whole thing, you have to buy tickets. And she saw that tickets were $100. Um, from some airline that's not Spirit, it was like a different one, and I was like, I'm not comfortable with flying with $100 tickets to Michigan, like that's probably not a good idea. Uh, hold on one second, I'm going to see what Vic's doing, because she's over there sniffing. What are you doing? She's not sniffing, she's just laying down <clears throat> under the table. Because um, we have a table that she can lay down. So, anyway, make sure my face is centered here. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, so, anyway, so we were. So, I was like, no, it doesn't work that way. Like, the tickets are going to be more. So, we look we look on, um, on uh, like different airlines like Southwest and all that they don't fly out of our airport that we needed so we we had to get Delta so I don't know if you all know this but now there's a new rule where if you fly with a service animal slash dog because service animals are not considered horses anymore under the Air Carrier Access Act um, so if you fly with a service dog you have to have proof that they are vaccinated with rabies and um, that they will behave you have to fill out this little form that says like uh, my dog will behave in public if it growls, barks, lunges, jumps, or in any other way seems like it won't be a service dog, then therefore it has the, has the right to deny you from flying, which I think is kind of crappy, because like, you know, what if your dog's lunging after, like, I don't know, uh, someone is trying to attack you or something, then, you know, that's okay, like, your dog's gonna be a dog, you know, uh, and, and who, who gets to make the decision that a dog is behaving correctly but anyway I already made a video about that I think I'm not going to go into that so anyway so there's this form you have to fill out and it's on a PDF um, document so we got our book our, our tickets booked and that was the whole thing because the app wasn't completely accessible I had my sister help me also I was doing it with like uh, two or one bar cell service they didn't have Wi-Fi at the time um, so yeah so we make the serve we make the um, the uh, the tickets and everything get booked and call the puppy raisers and they're like yeah come this day whatever so we're going for a week so then i call the um well i get the get the the uh the airline form online and i try to fill it out and it's a it's a pdf so i change it to a word document type it and then turn it back into a pdf um basically i'm just agreeing that she's not going to do anything they can take me off if they feel necessary that she's not going to poop on the plane and if she does poop on the plane i can clean it up efficiently uh, that um, I requested a special assistance getting to the airport uh, because even though I had a sighted person with me, my sister had never flown before and I needed that assistance regardless because I'm blind and I can't figure out how to get to an airport. Um, I don't know, it's always good to have an extra person there just for help because like we had our carry-ons, we had beacon, like you know, we need an extra person. So, fill out the form, 
then I, I um, well, okay, so back up. So there is a way to submit it on Delco's website. So I go to Delco's website and I'm trying to submit it. Nothing happens, nothing happens. It kept saying some kind of error or something. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just call Delco. So I call Delco. Four hours later, I'm still on the phone, on hold. Uh, and I'm like, oh, this is getting so annoying. So then I was like, fine, I'll just text them. So I text Delco. Uh, and I still wait for hours and hours and hours because they're still super busy. Finally, someone texts me back and says, oh, I can't really help you, but call this number at whatever. It's like their accessibility number. So I called them. And I'm like, hey, so here's the deal. Um, how do I submit this form with my Delta trip? Because, you know, it's, it's inside, the, doc, inside the, the trip planner, so I should be able to do it accessibly. And she was like, well, uh, we haven't really figured it out yet, so if it doesn't work, try to send it through an email. And I was like, okay, what's the email? And she's like, well, you have to submit the document first. Um, like, go ahead and submit it without the form, and it'll say something about, please respond to this email. Uh, and then you submit it that way. And I was like, well, why can't you just give me the email so I can send it that way? She goes, oh, I can't do that. I was like, well, why not? Like, I, I still need to submit it. Like, it's not going to just go away. I don't have a printer at my house. Um, cause my roommate's printer was broken, and she's like, well, just go to, like, a store and print it out, and I'm like, uh, no, because, one, I don't even know where I would go, because I don't have transportation to the store, this was also when my roommate was gone, she was gone for, like, a month, so I had literally, like, no one, um, that had a printer that I could borrow, uh, in a conveniently timed manner, so, um, I was like, but I still want it in an accessible format on my phone, or PDF, you know, so I can show the people I have the form, and she was like, well, I don't know. Figure it out, basically. Um, and I was very upset, because I'm like, you're the accessibility team, how do you not know? Uh, and they were just like, well, we haven't figured it out. And I was like, you've had six months. This, this thing has been in effect since January of 2021. Like, come on. Um, and then I had to call my vet, my, my local vet, and my vet from my hometown, and be like, hey, I, I had this form, so they might be calling you, because apparently they're very strict about that. They were also going to call my school and ask if I had a... Uh, leader dog, and, um, which, again, if you own a trained, don't, they can't do that, obviously, because you're the trainer, but, um, some of the schools have been saying that the airport, airlines have been calling them to confirm that their clients are actually their clients, which I'm like, you know, you can fake pretty much any disability nowadays, but if you're gonna fake a guide dog, and your dog can still actually work, and go around poles, and do all that stuff, like, that's amazing, I mean, so you don't put that much effort into faking a disability and faking a, a guide dog, it's like, I honestly, that, that's amazing, um, you know, so, yeah, and like, if you can't tell by the behavior of the guide dog that it's actually working, then that's a problem. So, anyway, so I, I called the vets, and they're like, well, one of them was like, um, okay, like, what is this thing, and I explained it, and they were like, well, I guess we can talk to them, but I don't know what you're talking about, and I'm like, Okay, but you're a vet. You should kind of know this stuff. Uh, and then one of them thought I had a pet. And it was a whole thing. Um, which the vets know me. That's the weird part. They know who I am. So they know that I have a guide dog. Uh, but, you know, whatever. So we get... <clears throat> I, I was able to get my stuff printed out from my sister's printer. Um, she went to a place and got it printed out. And then my mom and sister came down. We left on a Monday. So we're going to go from Monday to Saturday. Friday. Friday? Saturday. Yeah, it was Saturday, so Monday to Saturday, because the 3rd was on a Saturday, so July 3rd was on a Saturday. So we go Monday to Saturday, and my mom and sister came down Sunday evening, because I was supposed to, I was supposed to go to the airport at, like, really early in the morning, like 5 or 4, um, Monday, because our, our, our airplane boarded at 6, and they had to be there early, because I didn't know about the hassle with the guide dog, or the whole thing. It turned out it was a good idea, because it was a hassle. So my mom and sister came down, and... That was the night that the thing happened where I had to end up leaving my apartment later on. Uh, again, I'm not ready for that, but um, I cried a lot that night. Uh, nobody slept, and I really needed that vacation <laughs> um, just to get away, because after that night, I was emotionally just, it was a mess. Um, so Monday morning, we get to the car, we're going to the airport. And we get inside, and I go to the counter, and I'm like, hey, I have a guide dog, blah, 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 here's the form, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, 
oh, okay, well, we don't really need this, but and I'm like, yes, you do, it's required by the DOT, like, or not DOT, whatever. Whoever does flying, I think it's the, the Department of Transportation, um, but yeah, and, and I was had to basically educate the front desk guy about why we needed it. Um, and then I said, you know, we asked for gate assistance, can someone help us? And the gate assistants are basically people that help you from the, uh, the, the front desk go to the airport through security to your gate. That's basically their job. Uh, and they were like, well, um, your mom's here, so she can help you. And I was like, yeah, she drove us here, but that's not her job to help me. And they were like, but she's here, so she can help you. And I was like, at this point, I was just, it was like 5 a.m. I was like, I'm tired. I don't care. Just, just whatever. So they give her a security pass, which she wasn't planning on going through security. So she has all this stuff in her purse, like pepper spray and, uh, big bunches of lotions and shampoos and toothbrushes and all this random stuff that she had for us that she was going to give to us once we got past security. Uh, plus stuff that we'd given her from our suitcases that we couldn't take through security. So she had all this stuff in her purse. So we go through security and the guys are like, or TSA agents, I guess, they're not all guys, there was a lady, I think. They were like, um, you can't take this ma'am, and she's like, I'm not even flying, like, they made me go with them because she's blind. And they were very rude to me, um, I was not pleased. They basically took Beacon from my hands, and I was like, I need my dog, like, you're not allowed to do that, legally there's a rule, saying that you can't be separated from your guide dog. Um, and they did anyway, and they were like, Beacon, sit! sit, sit, and I was like cracking up because, um, if you've never been through security, so there's like a metal detector you have to walk through, and it's like a gate, so imagine like a little, um, thick kind of gate that you have to walk through, and there's no actual fencing to it, it's just a, just a little open space, um, and Beacon's harness and leash and collar all have metal elements in them, so when you walk through, the metal detector will go beep, 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 and they go, oh no, and they make you either go back through again, or take off your belt, or they pat you down. So, <laughs> Beacon goes through, and I'm giving her a super long leash so she can walk through in front of me. And they were like, just send the dog through, and then you go through. And they were like, can you let go of her leash? And I was like, well no, because I'm not going to do that, we're in the airport, and if she got loose and ran away, I would be in trouble and wouldn't be allowed to fly, because that's the new rules now, if your dog gets loose in the airport, I have to be tethered, this whole thing. Um, which I don't agree with, because if you're in a wheelchair, you need to have a leash. You know, or, or if, you have a, if you have a dog that doesn't need a leash, um, or can't have a leash because of your disability, I don't think that's right, but whatever. So, but Beacon and I, like, I need the leash to see what she's doing. That's just how we work, um, because I can't physically see her, so I need to know what she's doing at all times. Uh, so, you know, I, I, uh, they basically take the leash out of my hand. <laughs> trying to keep, keep her, because what happens is she goes through the security, and then she goes, oh, my handler's back there, and she turns around and comes right back through the gate. <laughs> so, I was, like, cracking up, because they were, like, all upset, because they were like, Beacon, no, Beacon, no, and I, I didn't even, I don't even know if I told them her name or not, I don't know, um, but I was, like, in my head, I'm like, well, she's going to check on me, like, that's her job, you know, <laughs> so they finally grabbed her leash from me, which I objected to, and they pulled her back, and they were, like, of course, she was all excited because, you know, people were petting her. So they were, like, petting her and saying, oh, what a cute dog, which they're not allowed, well, they shouldn't do because they're TSA. They should know better. Um, and they start petting her and patting her down. And there's a difference between patting down and petting, by the way. Um, patting down is when they just run their hands through her very professional manner, um, don't make a big fuss about it. But with these people, they had no idea. So they were just like, hi, buddy, aren't you so cute? And Beacon's really excited. So she's like, oh, hello. Tail's all wagging, she's all jumpy. Not jumping up people, but just like jumpy in general. Just be like, ooh, hi, you're petting me. Oh my gosh, just keep petting me. Um, which is right upset because she's in the harness, you know? That's not okay. So, then, <laughs> they go, um, and they start like, uh, you know, petting her and she's getting offside. And they're like, can you calm her down? And I'm like, no. I'm over here through, still trying to get through the metal detector. I can't calm her down. You have her leash. How am I supposed to do that? And I was getting annoyed and angry because I'm like, one, you shouldn't take my dog, and two, I'm over here. I'm not, I, I can't control my dog if you took my dog from me. Like, that's not how it works. Uh, also, like, I told you six times that I need a leash to control her. Uh, so eventually she calms down and they get me through and, um, they're just like, 
he steps over there and I'm like great that's not helpful um can you tell me exactly where it is and they were like it's over there and I was like again I'm blind like you got to tell me specifically where it is um because what happens to security is they put the, your stuff in these bins and then you slide through a table and then they go okay you're good um but the really sad part is that they assumed that because I'm blind I wouldn't do anything so they literally I had a backpack and I had a, a suitcase a carry-on suitcase they opened my suitcase for like two seconds, zipped it back up, and moved it on the table. There was no, um, like looking in deep, like I had a bunch of medicine in there, and I had, uh, Beacon's ear cleaner that's like over the limit of ounces. I didn't even tell them I had that in there, they just let me go. Um, I still had like most of my stuff in the backpack, um, that they should have told me to take out, but they didn't. Um, so, you know, I was kind of upset, because I'm like, if someone, like, we're spaying blindness just to do something to the airports or to the plane or whatever, they could get away with it because these people didn't even check. So it's like, okay, you're good, bye. And I'm like, I can have a bomb, you don't know? I'm like, come on, do your job. But they didn't, so whatever. Um, luckily, I didn't have a bomb, obviously, but, you know, I could have, and they wouldn't have even cared. They would have let me go, and it would have been their fault. Um, so anyway, we get on the plane, or we get, sorry, we get to the gate. And then, this is my mom still helping me, by the way. Um, sister, um, we get to the gate, we sit down, and we're just chilling at these little, uh, metal chairs, and waiting, waiting, waiting. My sister starts freaking out. She had to go to the bathroom, like, 20 times, because she doesn't, like, flying ever. She's never flown before, so I understand. So then, they say, pre-boarding people, please come to blah, blah, blah. So we're like, okay, cool, that's us. So we go to the plane, we get on the plane. People were very chill. They helped me a lot, um. Which is really nice because they weren't just like, figure it out. They actually assisted me onto the plane and guided me to my seat, which is amazing. Then they took my suitcase um, because it wouldn't fit in the overhead compartment. Um, because the plane was small, we had like a weird thing going on. I don't know. So uh, they took me to, or they took my suitcase to the, the, uh, the jet, bridge, jet bridge, which is the little part between the plane and the actual airport. Um, and then they, you know, they put, they put, they put a pink tag on it, which means that basically when you leave the plane, it'll be right there. They don't, they don't fly with that open. They, they put it in the under part of the plane. Um, but once you leave the plane, you grab it from that, that bridge area. So I had a giant bell on my suitcase, so that way I could tell it was mine. Um, I think it was like a bike bell, but it worked for me. I don't really care. So we, we get... We get on the plane, my sister's like freaking out. They give us this really tiny seat and they're like, Can you get be uh well not be can you get your dog's head in? And I was like, Man, I'm trying, man, this is like really tight. Like they didn't even give us bulkhead. It was just like a really normal seat. And I'm like, Can we have bulkhead? And they were like, No. I was like, Okay, this is gonna be a fun trip. So we're like crowded in together. Uh it was a small, smaller plane, two two seats on each side. My sister and I were crowded together. Beacon was like on our feet. My feet were numb by the time we got done because she was like, her harness was like digging in. And I don't, I don't believe in taking off her harness when we're flying because, you know, if there's an emergency, I need that. So, I know people do, but I'm like, no, I'm, I'm keeping a harness on. Um, they even asked me, they're like, do you want us to take your harness and put it up here? And I'm like, no, if we're dying, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> um, so, we're flying and my sister grabs my hand and she's like, her hands are sweating and shaking, and I'm like, it's okay, like, calm down, we're not gonna die, and I guess if we do, we do, you know, um, so we make it, and she was like, we made it, yay, and I was like, yeah, we did, so I get to the jet bridge, and she's like, not understanding the fact that our bags will be there eventually, because she's like, did they get our bags, and I was like, yeah, they'll be here, just calm down, so we let everyone else go ahead of us, and this is when we got to um, Detroit, Detroit, Michigan, so the puppy racers didn't live in Detroit, we had another layover, or we had a layover in Detroit, and then we had to go to a different place, so I, I made sure to ask the flight attendant and the people at the gate, I said, hey, we have a gate assistant, can they come for us, and they were like, yeah, yeah, um, they'll be here, so I make sure to tell them very specifically that I'm not riding in a wheelchair no matter what they do, because I don't need a wheelchair, I can walk just fine. And they were like, yeah, but you need one. And I'm like, no, I don't. I can walk. So we get our bags. And the reason why I'm so uh, determined about the wheelchair thing is because, one, 
I don't need it. Two, I have a guide dog, and so if her, if her leash or something got tangled in the wheelchair, I don't know if they'd be able to stop because they're pushing you. You don't push yourself; the people push you. So I don't, I don't like, I don't like that. Um, so <clears throat> we're waiting at the, the 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 gate, like the end of the gate, the ramp part, um, off the off the jet bridge, and this guy comes and he doesn't speak English, which I don't have an objection to that, but he's I couldn't understand and nobody can understand that, and I'm like, what are you trying to say? I don't understand. Uh, and he wasn't very good at guiding a blind person, even though I explained, you got to be specific. He would just be like, we're turning. Okay, which way? Elevator. When? Where? And he would just, and I, I know he could speak English because he was talking to other people as we walked by them. So it just frustrated me to the fact that he didn't. Even after I tried to educate him, he didn't even notice, like, you have to say specifically where we're turning, when we're turning, when the elevator's going to be, you know, you have to be specific. He wasn't. Um, so, he comes with a wheelchair, and I'm like, dude, we don't need the wheelchair. Like, I can walk. And he's like, oh, you can? And I'm like, yeah, that's what the dog's for. Like, it's not to help me walk, it's to guide me. Um, and I explained the whole thing about how you walk ahead, we'll follow you, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, okay. So we go through the airport. My sister is having a really hard time because she asked the guy to take one of our suitcases and he didn't. So she had two suitcases, a backpack. I had my backpack and Beacon, which I was going to take a suitcase, but my sister was like, no. And I was like, it's fine. I have wheels. Like, it's fine. She was like, no. So I told the guy no escalators because we didn't want to deal with that with Beacon because we've never been trained on escalators. And if you've ever been through Detroit airport, it's like a giant airport with, they have music, which is really nice. It like, goes through the whole thing. So we're walking through, la di da. It's really annoying because it's really long, and the guy's literally not saying a word. And I'm like, well, this is awkward. And I make sure to tell him six or seven times that Beacon has to go to the bathroom before we get to the gate because she has to pee because it's been like, you know, five hours at this point, five or six hours on a plane, and she needs to pee. And so then we get near our gate, near being about 77 gates away. We were at gate zero. And we had to get to gate 77. And the guy was like, well, it's over there. Good luck. Bye. And he's, I was like, wait, aren't you supposed to like help us the whole way? He's like, well, we're busy, so we don't really have time. And I was like, you don't have time to help us? Like, we're customers. Like, what the heck, man? Like, that's your job is to assist people. I didn't say it that harshly, but in my head, I'm just like, man. He's like, we'll figure it out. Bye. And I was like, dude, like, you can't just know, you know. So then we go to each gate, and we're like looking and looking, trying to figure it out. Okay, my sister's like, I'm not looking, my sister is. And by this point, Beacon is pulling really, really hard, which means she has to pee. Which means she will literally pee in about two minutes if we don't get to the next, you know, or the guide dog, service dog relief area, which I was told was outside, but it's not outside. So we're walking, walking, walking. We finally find a, uh, um, a gate person at a gate, and we're like, so we need assistance because our person just like left us and told us to figure it out and they were like, well, I can't help you. And I'm like, well, I know you can't, but can you get someone who can? And they were like, well, yeah, we're going to be like an hour. And I'm like, we have half an hour until our flight leaves because of all this. So we really need someone like now. She's like, well, I don't know, but the service animal relief area is over there. And she points and I'm like, okay, where? Like right or left? And she's like, over there. And I'm like, no, lady, you're not listening. I'm totally blind. I need to know specifically. But at this point, I am saying that in that type of tone because I'm annoyed because they just left us at the airport, basically. And if I had been by myself, like, I would have been lost because I wouldn't have had any sighted person with me. Um, which we still got lost, so regardless, you know. So we make it to the, the service animal relief area, which is literally just this weird carpet thing with, like, a... So now you're like, a litter box, okay? Like, a litter box, but there's a top on it made of carpet and instead of litter there's water so when you step on the carpet the water goes and pops out and spills all over the floor and there's a little hose and it smells like pee it's really gross so beacon's like i'm not peeing on there which i can't blame her i wouldn't either um so she peed on the floor and i was like oh no but oh well because they didn't help us so whatever so she pees on the floor she wasn't in harness which is fine she peed near the place but not on the place so i was like who cares? Whatever. So we go out of there as fast as we can because it's like, it's not us. It wasn't us. She didn't pee. <laughs> um, I was really trying to get her to poop, but she didn't because she was like, we're inside a building. I can't poop in a pla uh, on an airport. And I was like, okay, fine. 
So then we keep walking, walking, walking. We find the bathroom. We're like, let's go pee. So we go pee. And then we come back out and we go find the gate. We finally find the gate about 15 minutes before our plane leaves. And then we get to the gate. We tell the people, hey, we want to pre-board, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, okay, that's fine. Then they go, by the way, people, um, your flight's been moved to gate, fill in the blanks. We're like, okay, fine. So we go to that gate. Then, <laughs> um, so we're waiting to pre-board, and eventually we do pre-board. We get on the plane, we get to the place, and, oh my gosh, like, uh, we got off the plane, and they were like, do you need assistance? Do you need assistance? This is a small airport. And I'm like, no, we're okay. Like, our person's going to meet us at the baggage claim, which is outside. But, um, can you tell, tell us how to get there? And they were like, yeah, so it, there, it was a pilot, I think. He gave us extremely awesome directions of, like, walk about 10 feet, turn left, walk about 10 feet, turn right, except he said steps, not feet. Um, and I was like, this guy is awesome, thank you. Um, and I was like, man, you could have helped us a lot at our last one in Detroit, they just left us. And he was like, really? And I was like, yeah. Um, so we get, we get to the, the, um, the, uh, place, and we meet our puppy raisers, and it was awesome. We went on vacation the whole week. They have a really nice house, um, with a dog pin, and it was amazing, because the pin is fenced, and Beacon was like, whoa, freedom! And they have a beach, and we went kayaking, we went tubing, uh, we went touring of some national monuments, and went to see the, um, I'm not going to say who, because that would give away the city. We went to see a big city. We went to the, um, uh, there was like a, a festival thing we went to. There was a concert at a park we went to. There was like an orchard place with like apple cider and, and like a winery kind of place, brewery place. Um, we went swimming on their beach, which was amazing that they have a beach next to their house. We had campfires. We, they have a pet bird named Squeak. <laughs> Love that name. Um, and he talks, so that was cool. Um, I actually got a video of him talking, so that was really neat. Uh, they had three other dogs. I'm not going to say their names, but two of them were career change later dogs. One of them was adopted. Um, the first one, or I'm sorry, the little one that they just adopted, or just got back to them, um, was dropped. Literally, she was at the last point of the medical evaluation. Um, before she got matched with the client, and they were like, they found a little lump on her, uh, one of her elbows, and so they were like, sorry, she can't be a guide dog. Um, but she is so bouncy. She's just like a really, she's a golden retriever, and she's like, woo, I have a tigger. So I, I jokingly called her tigger, because she's just really bouncy. <laughs> um, but you know, it was really nice, because I could leave Beacon free, and I didn't have to worry about it. Like, this is the first time I've ever been to someone's house where I could just let her go. And she would just do whatever, you know. Um, that was relaxing. And honestly, after what happened, which I can't go into uh, legally and also I'm not ready for that, um, I needed that. I, I slept really decently. I kept waking up at like 4 or 5 in the morning, but I still slept. Um, I didn't cry, <laughs> so that was nice, um, mentally I think I was just, it was good to get away, um, from what happened, and, uh, physically I was like, I am doing so much better than I was last night, which would have been Sunday, and, you know, so, uh, anyway, so then I, I get there, and I, I got a job interview while I was there, and I was like, oh crap, I'll do this next week, so then, I was coming, ooh, I also had to, tell you, we went to this awesome cheese shop, I love it, I went to it when I was a leader dog, different place though, different, different town, but they had a shop with cheese, and I was like, ooh, cheese, even though I can't eat it because I'm lactose intolerant, but I had a little bit, and then I paid for it, but that's okay, um, but it was cheese, it was so good, ooh, so good, I was like, whenever we were leaving, I told the pepper ranchers, I'm like, here, you guys can take this, because I don't want to eat it all, mm, so good, so then, uh, what else did we do? Um, oh, oh yeah. So if you ever been to Michigan, they have this place called Mackinac Island. It's like a little island uh, across from Michigan. I think it's still part of Michigan. I think, but just like it's not. It's an island. Um, and they make fudge there. It's really good fudge. It's like amazing fudge. And we found it at a grocery store. And I was like, 
oh look, I found my fudge. And I'm so happy I love fudge, even though my body still doesn't because, again, it's lactose, but I was like, yes, fudge, woo. That like made my day. So then we go to the airport early and we I give them the form for the service animal form at the gate, or at the counter, I'm sorry. And they were like, would you like assistance? And I was like, yes, I would love some assistance. Thank you. So then uh, this lady comes and she walks with us to the, the security. Our puppy racer, uh, one of them walks with us to the to the security area. And um, I took Beacon out of harness just so they could pet her and tell her bye and everything. And, um, the gate person that was helping us was like, I guess she had this look on her face, like, what are you doing? And the, this puppy raiser lady was like, well, um, we're going to start with the puppy, so, you know, I'm, I'm this why I'm telling her goodbye, and, uh, you know, so, yeah, so then the, the security lady, or gate attendant lady helped us through security, she was very awesome, I was very happy, I was like, thank you, <laughs> um, she got all my stuff for me, helped me put it back in a backpack, like, did all the things, uh, helped tell me what everything was, so I could figure out where to put it, some of the stuff that I didn't, you know, I couldn't find it. She'd be like, it's over here to your left or over here to your right or whatever. Um, you could tell she had helped blind people before because she was awesome. Then we go through the, uh, what do they call it? The, um, the security. They're awesome. They make me take everything out of her harness pouch, which I was like, thank you, because that's what we need to do. Um, they were very professional about patting Beacon down. They didn't pet her. They were just like, you know patting her down like they should be as professionals and they were like she's really well behaved and I was like thank you also you're not petting her like the other ones were so they uh, they took her leash for like two seconds but they they told me what they were doing the whole time they stood her like really close to me so I could tell what she was doing um so I wasn't as panicked this time because I was like you know if she learns hard enough she can get away with get away from somebody who wasn't expecting it so you know they were very chill and I respectful basically they're very respectful of me as a blind person um so we get through security they do it right they check me check everything i have which i was like thank you for doing your job good job for you then we go to the plane and again our plane got moved to the different gate and they told us we were pre-boarding and we weren't we had like a lot of free time and then they said <laughs> that um well on on the plane that we we went through on sunday or monday they said that uh, we could stay four hours because they wanted people to give up seats because there was not enough room. So then on the way back from our puppy raiser's place to Detroit, they were like, so we had to move to a different gate and also would anyone please give up their seats because we don't have enough room. And they were like, no, because, well, we were like, no, because we, we have a flight. Like, we can't just leave. We're going to come at like 11 o'clock. Um, and my roommate was picking us up. My mom and my mom had went home to her home. Uh, so my roommate was picking us up from the airport. So she was back in town. She's picking us up. So we go um, from our to our on the on the plane. And our flight attendant was amazing. I, her name is Lydia. So if you ever fly on um, Delta Airlines and you get Lydia, thank her. She is amazing. Uh, she literally is youngish and. She explained everything she was doing, safety-wise. She came over to me and made sure I understood what was happening. Um, she was like doing the usual, do you want cookies, pretzels, peanuts, whatever, you know, the choices were. And she, instead of asking my sister what does she want, she literally came to me and was like, uh, well, I think she knew my name. I think I told her my name. She was like, would you like some pretzels, cookies, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Sure, I'll take some. And I said, thank you for recognizing me as a person because literally everyone today has been like, does she want, would she like, can you tell her? And I'm like, I have a person, speak to me. Even if I can't speak back, speak to me. Um, so yeah, and then we get to Detroit and then, oh, it was so awesome. Our person was very helpful. Um, we got in a big group with like 30 people. They were guiding us. They were, we were laughing at each other because just some of the stuff that would happen. Um, Ten, maybe not 30, there was like 10, but there was enough, and a, a lot of people, they stopped for us to let me go to the bathroom, which I was like, thank you so much, this is awesome, um, we thought they were going to leave us, and we're like, oh no, don't leave us, we don't know where we're going, and they were like, no, of course not, that's not, we wouldn't leave you, um, and I was like, thank you for doing your job, because the last person like left us, so, 
Oh, and then whenever the guy did leave us, the first guy at the first time we flew back, flew from Detroit, uh, he was walking around doing nothing whenever we saw him again. Because he's like, oh, you made it. And we're like, yeah, no thanks to you. Um, so anyway, so back to the, the flight home from Michigan. So luckily the guy was awesome. They stopped for us. They waited on us when we took the plane. They were amazing. The flight attendants were awesome. And we got, we got home. Uh, and I was like, thank you. And then unfortunately, um, I was back in my apartment where everything happened and I couldn't sleep for like a week and a half. Uh, like to the point where I would sleep for maybe three hours a night and still wake up having nightmares and mentally I was not in a good place, but, um, so then I just decided, plus also my roommate got a job in a different city, so she had to move anyway. I decided that it wouldn't be a good idea for me to be there anymore. Um, so I had to leave, and it was a quick leave, um, with like literally a couple days to spare, kind of like whenever we had to move out of college, um, and I'm getting better, um, I sleep through the night, I, I cried so much that first week back from Michigan, I don't normally cry, um, but mainly it was because of what happened, but also the interview that I had, um, a week later, they they called and told me I made the third round of interviewing, and I was like, cool, go me, I made it. And then a couple hours later, they called and were like, yeah, so we have safety concerns about you being blind and working with patients. You can't work for us because you're blind. They literally said that um, without saying the word blind, but they said your disability or your limitations or some kind of form of that. Uh, but they did it over the phone, so I have no proof, of course. And I was just coming along, and I was like bawling, and she's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, they told me that I can't work for them because I'm blind and 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 I was upset because this is my first interview. You know, I I tried so hard to find a job and I couldn't. So I, I'm good now. I, I've applied to 20 like over 50 different jobs right now and I've only gotten two interviews so far. Um, so you know that's fun, but uh, it's gonna be a struggle. Um to find a job, honestly, I'm really concerned. I, it's been a couple months and I still haven't found one. Um, but I feel like the right one will come along. It's just, I really struggle with waiting on things like this. I really want to know my future and I'm applying all over America except for Alaska and Hawaii. Um, so, you know, there has to be places. It's just, it's just, I, I really want to know my future. And I don't and it stresses me out and I really want to know. I'm not very good with that. Um, but anyway, so, <clears throat> moved out of my apartment, moved into my mom's house for like a week, uh, found a family, family friend who was able to rent to us a house in town, um, who understood that I could leave any time basically, and so rented this place with my sister, and my, my dog loves it, um, except it's like a million degrees outside, so we can't go anywhere right now, but, uh, we can walk when it gets cooler, and, this town's not the most accessible town, so I wouldn't live here, um, you know, I wouldn't live here, like, permanently for a job, but for now it works, um, I got away from the, the situation at my apartment for now, um, although the, the police keep calling me, so that really doesn't help any, but, uh, you know, mentally I'm in a better place, um, Emotionally, I would say maybe, but I still, certain things trigger it, um, something will happen and I'll just be like, oh, that reminds me of what happened, or someone will get really close to me, and it just, oof, um, so, so, I want to say mentally I'm doing good, but I, I can't say it's, I'm, I'm okay completely, um, <laughs> Not just with the job thing, but with everything that happened and just trying to trying to deal with it. Um, so you know, I'm, I'm in there. I guess I'm I'm hanging in there, but it's it's not super easy. Um, one day I do want to talk about it. But if you want a general idea of what happened, um, look up Joy Hu's video. Uh, Joy and H U is who. Uh, she's a blind YouTuber, and she also made a video recently about. Um, something that similarly happened to me, just not at where she said it would. 
um, and not, not how she described it, but something similar happened. So if you want to know what happened, look up her videos. That'll kind of give you an idea of where I am mentally and why. So, um, yeah, it's been crazy, stressful, annoyingly weird, but I'm doing okay. I'm sleeping and, um, I haven't been crying, so that that's good. <laughs> um, I, I don't cry a lot, but literally the week after vacation, I cried for, oh gosh, one time I cried for like three hours straight, and I knew why I was crying, that's what made it worse, um, so, yeah, um, but anyway, thank you all for watching, <laughs> this is a super long video, I apologize, I just really need to talk to people, um, and I, I thought that I would give you the joy of flying as a blind person first before I broke the before I told you the, you know, the bad part, I guess, about my life and how crazy it's been right now. Um, so, yeah, anyway, thank you for watching, and, um, ooh, I do want to add real quick, though, because some of you will ask, so I was in a, it could have been a dangerous situation, and Beacon was not there, um, so she was not affected by any of this that happened to me, although she was, uh, well, now she's being very protective of me. Um, I think she knows that I'm really stressed out about that stuff. I I went and bought a bunch of self-defense items. <laughs> um, and I didn't walk alone ever in my apartment building or outside my apartment building. Um, so anyway, she wasn't affected by this at all. She wasn't even there when it happened. Um, but... She knows something is wrong because I, I just don't, I'm not as cautious as I, or not cautious, not as um, trusting of people as I once was. I, I um, try to, I guess, I don't know, I, I just really, now, I, I just really don't trust people that much anymore, um, trying to fix that. Uh, I just don't want people close to me, physically, um, I want to, like, run away, <laughs> um, worse than I did before, I don't, I don't like people being close to me, so, like, like, when I went to the hospital, because I sprained my ankle last year, all these nurses and doctors came around me, because it was COVID time, and I was like, please go away, please go away, and they were like, your heart rate is spiking, and I'm like, I know, because I'm freaking out, because you are right there, um, but now it's gotten a lot worse, um, I don't like people being next to me, uh, strangers especially, I'm just like, go away, like, go, you know, um, I must have had a look on my face when that happened, because I, we went to this, we, we were getting mover people to help us move out of our apartments, and this, this person came up to me, and, uh, I kind of, like, backed away, and, um, they were like, you look nervous, and I was like, I'm good, and they were like, well, you just had this look on your face, are you all right, and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm totally fine, even though, like, literally I wasn't, I was like, oh my gosh, please go away, um, so, you know, it's weird, because I, I'm very, I'm a very open person, and I like to pride, my, pride myself on my ability to just, um, come back from things, I, the word's not coming to my mind, but, um, you know, when you bounce back quickly, and I just, I'm not, <laughs> um, especially at night isn't really as bad, um, but also, like, you know, I've never really dealt with this kind of mental, uh, thing before, so mentally it's just like, oh, my brain's like, what the heck happened to you, why are you doing this, like, what's wrong with you, um, so, anyway, someday, once this is all over, I can talk about it, I will explain what happened in detail, um, but I... I really don't want to, um, and if you really want to know, please don't ask, because I'm not going to tell you, uh, I haven't even told the puppy raisers what happened, um, or, I don't know, my mom knows because she was there, my sister knows, um, my dad knows, and that's about it, and the police, obviously, but that, that's pretty much all, um, so, yeah, anyway, thank y'all for watching, uh, thank you for letting me share my crazy adventure and also this weird part, um, but yeah, so, once I can talk about it, I totally will, because I, 
needs to be brought into the attention of people. Um, ooh, sorry, there's a mosquito on my neck. Um, but yeah, so anyway, thank you all for watching. Thank you for letting me talk, and I will see you in whenever. <laughs> Bye.